Hello, Ryan. Good to see you back. Good to chat with you again. How are things going? Yeah, great to be here, Nicholas, as always. Always look forward to these conversations. And it's always great to be able to talk with you, um, especially with especially with lighting. I know we've been saying for a long time that lighting is one of the fastest growing categories for integrators. And that's just based off of like all the market research we've been doing, all the integrators we've talked to. Um, but for you guys, the guys that do the business by working with integrators on lighting projects, how, how I've always wondered, how is that um, a explosive growth translated into business? Have you been seeing a major uptick in interest as well? Yeah, we've seen a major uptick in interest for sure. Have we seen a major uptick in business? Not a major one. I, I'd say absolutely. We have more people calling us on a daily, weekly, monthly basis um, from this space than ever. But there's still only a percentage that are truly dipping their toes into it and offering the service to their clients. So we see a ton of interest, but it's not necessarily translating into the sales, the opportunities, the projects that we were expecting it would. And and that may just be economic timing of everything. There could be a number of factors. Um, you know, Rome wasn't built in the day. It mm -hmm. takes time for people to get comfortable. So that's why we're here. That's okay that it's not all happening at once. We want people to get comfortable um, understanding the process and learning design and learning how to sell these projects. So we actually prefer it that way. So it's a good thing that it's not one big tsunami wave coming at us. So we're getting the interest, we're getting people educated, and we're absolutely expecting to see that snowball start to roll downhill. But we're still we're still pushing it uphill right now in the outdoor lighting space. Mm. Yeah, it, it's good that you mentioned the outdoor lighting space, because I think right now a lot of people, you know, when they get their start in lighting, it's interior lighting. I think a lot of people... For, for a lot of people, that's a very familiar space because, you know, they are they deal with interior lighting on a day-to-day -day basis. And I feel they're probably a little bit more comfortable with that. Um, the landscape lighting, in contrast, is kind of, um, it almost seems like it's, um, a lot of people view it as being a more difficult entry point for people. Uh, so do you have any suggestions on how people can approach landscape lighting as a business extension just by when they're first starting out? Sure. And I would agree with that. I would agree with the fact that landscape lighting is more difficult. Um, you have a whole bunch of different factors, obviously, out in the yard, as opposed to just inside of drywall, right? <laughs> I'm not saying that there aren't challenges to overcome on the interior, but there can be thousands of challenges on the exterior. Also, when designing, so much of the indoor space, from what I've seen, is very similar. You know, we want to have a similar feel from room to room. We want even coverage. Landscape lighting is a whole different animal. I mean, we with different design tactics, I mean, we want to layer, we want to highlight certain features. We, we want to create visual destinations. We want to create symmetry. Um, it's a dynamic space and it is more challenging. So back to your original question, how are people approaching it? Well, as we're seeing, they're approaching it by starting the conversation. How do we get ourselves educated? Talking to different suppliers, talking to different associations. Um, we're a part of a couple of really good ones, AOLP, which is the Association of Outdoor Lighting Professionals, and ILLI, which is the International Landscape Lighting Institute. Um, those, two, those two associations are phenomenal. For training. So there's a lot that goes into it. And there's a lot that goes into being really good at it. And integrators, they're master at their crafts. They, they don't want to go in and, and half-ass something, excuse my French. Um, so we appreciate the fact that they are wading into it, not diving head first. But yeah, there are a number of different ways 
to get yourself educated. Obviously, we have these conversations on our team. You know, we have 250 plus years of experience in, in a fairly small team. So just having the conversations um, and getting comfortable with the design aspect, with the installation aspect, that's how that they can grow and add on to their business, add to their bottom line. And that's ultimately what we're talking about is how do we all make more money? <laughs> Now, very recently, we actually just did our top five custom integration trends for 2024. It's out in the magazine right now, and we should actually be posting those to the site shortly. But one of the articles I wrote um, was talking about how big the design aspect of lighting has becoming. And I think a lot of people are just understanding now how big of a differentiator it is um, in comparison to, you know, as soon as everybody... It, it, Lighting itself is a big category. Everybody's getting into it. How do you differentiate yourself when everybody is getting into this category? It's design. The uh, The challenge, I think, though, is that a lot of integrators are going to have to come to terms with the fact how open to expression design is. It's a form at the end that at the end of the day is like art, essentially. And so you have these very concrete ways and you can do things wrong and there are some concrete ways and you can do things right but i think like the right like the truly incredible stuff it's more open to interpretation um so i guess the question that i would have for you is do you have any rules of thumb you can give to integrators when they're designing with lighting um on how to do it for their first project sure and you know you make some great points lighting is subjective and it's hard to say that something is right, something is wrong. I'll tell you what is wrong. <laughs> wrong would be having major glare bombs where you know I'm walking from the driveway to my front door and I'm getting blasted in the face with light. So key number one is see the light and not the source of the light. So we want the light to reflect exactly where it is we want it to reflect but not be looking into it as we're looking out. Also, we want to keep a symmetric design. So we don't want the right side of our scene to be overpowering the left side of our scene and, and vice versa. We want it to feel and be symmetric. Also, we want to layer most of our scenes. And I don't know that that's something that people are familiar with from an interior lighting standpoint. But in most of our outdoor scenes, we have a foreground, a midground, and a background. The background is typically the brightest. The midground is typically the softest. And that creates some depth and dimension. And that really helps you pop the scene, add drama. Um, so those are a few different things you can do. On top of that, once you get comfortable with outdoor lighting, now I can start using color in certain areas. And that's how I can differentiate myself. And when I say color, no, I don't mean the revolving RGBW just blasting everywhere as bright as possible and, and make it look like Disney World. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'll show some pictures here of, of really artfully done color. It's static, it's soft, it helps enhance foliage and architecture, not overpower it. So you can start to learn how to add color in to your scenes, to your design, and that can make all the difference in the world between something that looks like everybody else's and now something that feels dramatic, it feels emotional, it elicits emotion, and it differentiates you from other people out there doing it. It's good that you brought up the uh, the layering and the color uh, stuff because it, it is something that comes up. Um, and this is more so for people that may be like moving from interior lighting out into landscape lighting. Those are kind of, um, I guess, techniques that can translate somewhat, obviously in different ways. But um, especially with the color that you're talking about, um, it's a lot like in interior design when you're trying to light up a piece of art. You can pick certain lights that'll be able to allow certain colors within the artwork to pop. And I imagine it's much the same way when you're working outdoors. You want to see the different colors of like, like you said, the foliage, the uh, the flowers, anything that's out there. You want to be able to see it just kind of pop. 
Yeah, and that's about picking high quality light sources too, hmm. because the poor ones don't have that high CRI value, which do allow you to see what's truly in front of you. Do you have a recommendation for, you know, speaking of CRI, do you have a recommendation for kind of like what an ideal CRI level is if you're trying to go for like good kind of color rendering? You know, usually anything over 80 plus is fine. 80 plus CRI, your index is up to 100. What you'll see on the interior if you're trying to light up paintings, something that is really detailed, then you'll see people use 92 plus CRI. Typically in landscape, again, unless you're trying to get very, very detailed on a, a fountain, a sculpture or something along those lines, 80 plus is, is just fine. Now, talk, uh, moving from like kind of like the different lighting techniques, you had mentioned earlier, you know, there are a bunch of different organizations that offer classes to kind of let you sort of wade into landscape lighting, so to speak. Um, are there any tools that you can kind of pair with those classes that can help integrators um, better learn or execute their lighting designs? Sure. You know, there are many, <laughs> but, you know, ironically enough, and thank you for the softball, we, we, um, for teeing it up for me, we do have a program, it's called LB 2.0, that allows you to create designs and proposals all in one. And we use that not only to help people close more projects, close more jobs, but to help train them and help them train themselves because they can utilize the design functionality of it. And I don't call it rendering. It's not true rendering. This isn't 3D visualization. It's basically illumination cones um, that, that you guys will see on the screen. And it just keep, gives people the understanding of what it is that we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to accomplish. So playing around that with that, with an expert who is guiding you through the process we have found has been really helpful for people new into the space to just get an understanding of, of how it is that we go about creating these beautiful designs. Now you talk about uh, people new to the space kind of learning, uh, being able to expose themselves to creating these designs. Have you noticed at all um, this type of software being a lot better at kind of showcasing to prospective buyers, you know, this is what it's going to look like when things are all set up? Yes and no. Remember, as I just mentioned, it's not a rendering. It's not a true rendering. What, what we do in our software isn't going to be an exact replica of how it looks at night. In order to do that, you've either got to do deep 3D photography and then put it in a, a Dial Lux or Vivid Lux, you know, that could take thousands of dollars to create this process to come up with something more realistic. Even then, it's not going to look perfect. Other people who are really advanced at Photoshop or are able to create some nice little snippet renderings, but it's just, you know, little scenes, little vignettes. They, they can't do it on a, a grand scale. So it's not about using it to sell the homeowner on this, this beautiful rendering. It's about the homeowner, the, the, the building owner, whatever, understanding how you plan on going about the process and getting a very clear view of how you are differentiating yourself from other people who aren't using it. It's not just about this visualization. It's also about documenting the project too. And that's so important, certainly in the exterior where things are constantly changing. Um, so project documentation is just as, if not more important than the initial visualization of the project. Where's my wiring? Where do my fixtures go? What products am I using inside of those fixtures? Hmm. Because if I have to service those systems, I want to be able to do it efficiently. And, you know, a CRM with a parts list is only going to tell me so much. So I have to document those projects. So really, that's where people see that they're bang for their buck is creating a chart 
for their installers to install the project and their technicians um, to go out and service systems uh, efficiently. Very nice. Um, are there any classes that you would kind of recommend for people? Again, I think um, I think we can stick within the realm of just like, these are people that are just getting started to lighting. Mm -hmm. You know, one of our vendors, FX actually has a, FX Luminaire has a great online training for people just getting started. Mm -hmm. um, we do training days at both our Florida and Ohio facilities. So we'll do hands-on training with some of our in-house experts. And then you kind of graduate up into those other associations. You graduate into what AOLP calls their cold program. And that's certified outdoor lighting design. Illy has its five day boot camp, which they host at different um, retreats across the country. And it's five 10 to 12 hour plus days being very hands on. I mean, it's intense. They call it a boot camp for a yeah. reason. But I'm not going to go to either of those classes without having a basic understanding of landscape lighting because I would just be overwhelmed. So those are kind of the steps where, and I mentioned FX um, specifically, Brilliance LED has a good basic training program. I, I'm sure our other vendors, Kitchler, um, Unique, they've got most lighting, landscape lighting manufacturers have some type of program to get people off the ground then from there, it's graduating to these different levels. Now, I'm, all, I'm always kind of curious because uh, you had mentioned you guys do, um, you know, tra like in-person training uh, out of your Ohio and Florida bases. And I'm always kind of curious with that. Do you know the spread of the people attending those courses? Is it mostly local guys or do you happen to see like a lot of people coming from out of state to kind of like check these uh, check these courses out? All depends on the time of year. <laughs> you know what? That's so, fair. I'm, I'm sure around this time, not a whole lot of people want to go out to Ohio. Exactly. So we will we'll see people fly down um, from the Northeast who just want to get out of the cold and be part of a program and, and vice versa. When it's 100 degrees in August, well, we want to be somewhere nice. So so let's get out. Let's take advantage of, of the Lighting Boss trainings um and let's go to akron ohio and, and cool off for a few days <laughs> so there are i'll say it's probably a 50 50 split between people who are locals and then others who are happy to fly in to get out of the cold or hot weather that's very nice well Ryan, thank you once again for coming back on with us to chat about lighting. I'm sure our audience tuning in is grateful to hear a little bit more about the category with how popular it has become. Um, before we sign off, is there anything else you wanted to add? You know, you do such a good job of laying this out for the <laughs> integrators. It's it's really hard to, to add more than you already have. So you've hit on a number of great points, Nicholas. Um, and obviously, we want people to continue asking about it, educating themselves, reaching out to us, reaching out to, to our manufacturers, learning about it, and taking a plunge at some point in time. When you're ready, let's go. It's fantastic. All of your clients are going to get outdoor lighting. They're going to. If they have automation systems inside, they're going to have outdoor lighting. So start the conversation with them, even if it's something you're not comfortable with. We can still set you up with plenty of great landscape lighting only installers in your area. So there are a number of different ways to make money, it, whether it be doing the project designs yourself and the install yourself with your team or um, setting up a referral based network. And, and we can help with either. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you once again for coming on. Thank you, Nicholas. I always appreciate it. Bye.